This video is the um, some quick notes on Chapter 1, Records and Information Management. One of your first objectives, and one that is covered in numerous ways throughout our course, is that records and information are essential to business. This slide gives some examples of that and how we see records in business. So records are created in different ways. When you purchase something, you're creating a record. Uh, there are regulatory compliance requirements. In fact, everyone needs records, including organizations and individuals. ARMA is an Association for Information Management Professionals. The ARMA definition of a record is stored information regardless of media or characteristics. It's made or received by an organization. It provides evidence of operations, and it has value requiring its retention for a specific period of time. More than likely, you have already heard of, of, these, um, of these things when you, if you took an accounting class. ISO is a worldwide federation of national standards organizations. Their definition of records is information created, received, and maintained as evidence and information by an organization or person in pursuance of legal obligations or in the transaction of business. Very similar to the ARMA definition, they all included some essential elements that you'll be covering in this chapter. Records can be stored in numerous ways. They can be reports, forms, books, and other records, but they are, re they are stored in, as paper, remote servers. They could be optical or digital storage media, which a lot of companies are doing for older records and even for some of the newer ones. They could even be intranet pages within the organization, or in today's time, they can also be video storage. Records types and values. We have four types of records, internal documents, external documents, transaction documents, and reference documents. And internal documents contains information for operation of the organization. In this chapter, you will be given some activities that will, where you will classify these types of documents. So you'll want to uh, learn these definitions. An external document contains information for use outside of the organization. A transaction document is used in an organization's day-to-day -day operations, and a rec reference document is needed to carry on the long-term operations of an organization. You'll also have records categories. We categorize them for purposes of retention and security. How secure should they be? How long should we keep them? The categories are, are vital records, important records, useful records, non-essential records. Normally, we also have administrative, legal, or historical value to a firm. All of these things determine how long a record will be kept for. The records and information life cycle is one of the things that you'll be covering throughout the textbook as well in the course. The lifespan of a record is expressed in five phases, creation, distribution, use, maintenance, and disposition. On this next slide, you see those five stages of the life cycle. The creation or receipt of record from outside the business. The distribution, who gets the record? Is it internal, external? How it's used, decisions, reference, inquiries, and legal requirements. How is it maintained, stored or filed, retrieved, and protected? In medical, we do a whole lot of retrieving, storing, filing, and retrieving. And disposition, transfer, retain, or destroy. Some records may not ever be destroyed. Others that are not that useful could be 
destroyed after a certain number of years. Records formats can be physical or electronic. Physical records are pop popular because they are more personal and individual. It's kind of like textbooks. Many of you don't like to use ebooks yet, although we're seeing more people beginning to like to use ebooks. Same thing with records. We're finding some good reasons and advantages of using electronic formats. The advantages of physical are that the paper requires no additional equipment, which means nothing breaking down, uh, you don't have to upgrade that equipment, etc. People can write on and annotate physical documents. They can also, these days, write on and annotate electronic documents, so that, is also, that can be an advantage of either. Paper is easily transportable. That was an old advantage. I would say that probably has changed some. Paper today is not as easily transportable sometimes as your digital. Or I like to use ebooks because I may work in different places and I can always access my ebook where I don't want, whereas I don't want to carry a heavy uh, accounting book or records management book along with me. Electronic records formats. An electronic record is a record stored on electronic media. A piece of equipment is required to view and read or listen to electronic records. Many of us use PDF, put most of our, we save a lot of our files in PDF so that it's easily read with the PDF reader. Electronic mail enables users to compose, transmit, receive, and manage electronic documents. Email is the primary mode of communication among employees in many organizations. Other electronic formats are wikis, blogs, and online forums, podcasts and webinars, tweets and social media sites. Recorded on from information on these media can be official records. They can also be unstructured and not considered to be records. Electronic record formats can also be popular because they're searchable. It's an automated system for electronic images of physical records. My interns for the last few years, many of them, had been scanning for most of the medical industry because they were all going to electronic formats. So it includes scanning, storing, retrieving, and managing records. It's a pretty big task to get done in the very beginning, but afterwards it's pretty easy to keep up. Textual data can be converted electronically using optical character recognition scanning software. One big advantage is that they are searchable, as I mentioned, and QR codes, such as the one you see on this screen, can also be scanned from phones. And you can store information that way to get to the consumer or even somewhat another business. End of this video.